we got a cuda on, ate a little sea bass while we're sharking. And this big bastard is going to become big shark bait. Mr. Cuda finally went for Mr. Seabiscuit. And now we got Mr. Cuda on a long shank owner hook and a 40 pound leader of 40 pound seven strand wire. I got the microphone plugged into the camera. That's the reason I can't stick it underwater. <laughs> I almost thought I was gonna stick it underwater and I forgot I actually got my microphone here. Yeah, that wouldn't have gone up. Oh yeah. Snaggletooth ledge trout is what we call these dudes. Oh, what's he carrying around? He's carrying around somebody's line with a bottom rig in it. <laughs> These are almost as dangerous as sharks. Yeah, watch for his teeth. Oh, I got it. Woo! Man, what a mouth. All right. Give him a hold up. Now you can see how truly big he is. Nice cuda. Nice cuda. All right, we certainly ain't catching sharks, but we are got ourselves some cudas going on here, man. Oh, I think it's a cuda that ate a little ruby lip grunt on, on the old free line. We got the barracuda slabs out behind the boat. We got the barracuda floating over here. Right there. We got the chum in the chum tube. We got the oil in the IV bag. We got the white and pink balloons with the slab of cuda on it and no sharks. He might even be bigger. Oh, excitement fills the air. I mean, if we were going through shark bait like crazy, this would be like free bait galore, wouldn't it? There you go. He wasn't too much big. No, he wasn't as big. So bigger than most of the lake fish I catch. There he is. Mr. Cuda. I guess we'll have to let this one go, huh? Holy shit. So we never even really caught him. We lassoed him. We got something on that ate the barracuda. Real, real, real. I don't think he's on it. Oh, oh yeah, you're going to have to stay up with him. There you go, you got him. Just making sure. You still want this clicker? It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's a, little, it's a little noisy. <laughs> Come on, man. This is what we sat out here for. We're we're hoping that some bitch comes up. He's ten foot. He's got to come up first. <laughs> I might just go ahead and bring that other rod Why in. Don't you? I don't want to have any problems here. Did you see the balloon break? I heard it. Oh, you heard it? Yeah. yeah, that's what we want. We want to hear it, pop, and then zzz, 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 zzz. Well, I was trying to reel up because I had a hit on that first one, that small line. Uh huh. And I heard something, and I look over to the side, and sure shit, the balloon is gone. Well, this has to be a pretty good fish because this is the chunk of meat that we're using. That's the chunk of bait. So whatever's out there that ate that, it's got to be pretty good.
Oh yeah. You don't know how much. There's only two things in the whole world of fishing out here that get me excited is giant sharks and giant speckled sea trout. And they couldn't be two further fish away from each other. I'm gonna go wherever he wants it. Reel all the way down, put the rod right into the water Because if we lose him on the bottom of the boat, there we go. We're gonna, he's gonna go underneath the boat. Now go all the way around, all the way around, all the way around. Oh my god! Oh yeah, nobody said this shit's gonna be easy now. Nobody said this is gonna be easy. Because I think this dude, wherever he wants to go, is where he's gonna wanna go. No, that's. <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> Nobody said it's gonna be easy. I didn't come out. We ain't, we ain't fish for the man in brown suit because he's easy. Easy was reeling up them three inch sea bass. <laughs> that's what easy was. Well, we got a little stalemate going here. We've had him up to the boat a couple times. Jeremy's doing really good on him. Uh, obviously, we've had to pull the anchor. We've had to pull the anchor. That was tricky. Uh, we've had him up a couple times. Leader up right to the almost rod tip, practically. The bait was hanging off the line. And the remoras were chasing it, so I think I got some good underwater footage of remoras chasing the bait that's attached to the line that's attached to. That was attached to the. Uh, Go ahead, cut it. And um, we got we got rid of the bait, I think. So he's just pulling us around now. Well, it looks like this is a uh, tiger shark of some sort. Sand tiger, I don't know what they call him. I'll have to actually look him up. We got a couple glimpses at him. He had the good tiger stripes. And he looks to be in about the, somewhat around that nine foot category, I think, possibly. Because I'm kind of looking at him according to how big the seven foot shark rod is. He's extremely thick. And could be that one that's pushing close to 500 pounds. It's an absolute man-eater. Alrighty. Problem is, he keeps hiding under the bow, and I'm trying to get the footage of him up back here. Okay, starting to see the bait again. This is where the belt comes in handy too, or the, uh, the harness, because all you have to do is lean on them. You can leave your arms alone. I see him and he keeps hanging right up there at the bow. I need to take a picture of you just doing that. Good night. <laughs> oh, 
There he is. Starboard. Yep, there's the bait coming up Slow again. Down. I want to cast them again. I'm going to pull up to him a little bit. I mean, we might really be underestimating this thing. This son of a bitch could be six, seven hundred pounds for all we know. We got that shark up to the side of the boat. It was extremely difficult to do video or anything at that time or any photographs. Uh, obviously, this is what happened. This is a Penn Mariner stand-up seven-foot rod, supposedly solid glass. Let me show you your solid glass rods. See that hole in the center? Everything else worked, uh, except when I leadered them, uh, the shark went into a complete death roll. You know, he started spinning around right on the side of the boat here. 
he did come out of the death roll, but then uh, we were both hanging on to him, and the leader went around him and chafed and broke. But the 12 aught hook, I was using a straight hook, 12 aught, 400 pound wind on leader, 60 pound. Uh, I think this is called uh, spider wire, you know, glow line, you know, yellow glow line, mono. It's monofilament. The reel worked fine, and this man right here worked just fine. He worked his ass off. Best captain in the ocean here. <laughs> but here's the deal. Here's the deal. He only took the vest and the harness to hold, that goes into the lugs about, eh, what, 30 minutes before it was all, we, we got him up to the boat. So he went mano y mano with this. He saw it in the video. This put a real kibosh in us getting them up and just having them swimming on the side of the boat. When that rod broke, we lost total control of them and had to just manhandle them with our hands. So what did you think of it overall? That was probably about a two and a half hour fight, if nothing more. And that shark was, I mean, I'm saying five to six hundred. I'm I'll, thinking I'll, five to six hundred pounds. I'll go with your judgment on that. Because, I, I mean, it was absolutely immense. There was no, there was no holding on to them. You know, and that harness really came in handy that last half hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you can see the man is a one after my own heart. He brings his own 16 ounce PBR. I was just sucking on a few of those PBRs last night. Best top off to the best fishing day I've ever had. That's that, coming a lot from Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah, and that was the biggest fish that's ever been on or next to this boat. I mean, in Wisconsin, we don't call them caught till they're in the boat, but he didn't want to reach down and grab it. Oh, no. No. <laughs> no, he had, a, he had a mouth about that wide. I hope the under, underwater footage came out really good. And what we're going to do now is we're going to beat feet back to the boat ramp. But that was a hell of a fight, at least two and a half hours, I think, that we were sitting on it. So we just wanted to do a little follow-up. If you think you want to do this, what would you say to somebody? You better have your shit in one sock. Call Captain Dave, he'll put you on him. I almost didn't think we were gonna get one. I almost didn't think we were gonna get one, but. I'm the one that saw the balloon go down. Yeah. He was busy catching little tiny things. <laughs> yeah, I was busy goofing around. The balloon popped and started going out. And at first, that fight, at first the thing acted like he didn't even know he was hooked, right? He was like kind of coming right to the boat. Oh yeah, until you put pressure on him. Then. Oh man, we had to hurry up and pull the anchor. We had to lift the engine out completely out of the water a couple times. If you think you want to do this, you better be an angler to start off with, right? Damn skippy. And a couple of y'all out there have contacted me about doing it. And it's not a family affair either. It's a couple guys and me. We can't have this boat full of you know, kids or anything oh. while you're doing it, you know. So, either way, we're heading on back. I call it success. I call it the best day I've ever had. <laughs> well, I'm glad for that. All right. See you on YouTube.